August 6th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Job chapter 6 through 8 from the Old Testament. Then Job responded, Oh, if only my grief could be weighed and my misfortune laid on the scales too. But because it is heavier than the sand of the sea, that is why my words have been wild. For the arrows of the Almighty are within me, my spirit drinks their poison. God's sudden terrors are arrayed against me. Does the wild donkey bray when it is near grass? Or does the ox low near its fodder? Can food that is tasteless be eaten without salt? Or is there any taste in the white of an egg? I have refused to touch such things. They are like loathsome food to me. Oh, that my request would be realized and that God would grant me what I long for and that God would be willing to crush me and he would let loose his hand and kill me. Then I would yet have my comfort. Then I would rejoice in spite of pitiless pain for I have not concealed the words of the Holy One. What is my strength that I should wait? And what is my end that I should prolong my life? Is my strength like that of stones or is my flesh made of bronze? Is not my power to help myself nothing, and has not every resource been driven from me? To the one in despair, kindness should come from his friend, even if he forsakes the fear of the Almighty. My brothers have been as treacherous as a seasonal stream, and as the riverbeds of the intermittent streams that flow away. They are dark because of ice, snow is piled up over them. When they are scorched, they dry up. When it is hot, they vanish from their place. Caravans turn aside from their routes. They go into the wasteland and perish. The caravans of Tima look intently for these streams. The traveling merchants of Sheba hoped for them. They were distressed because each one had been so confident. They arrived there but were disappointed. For now you have become like these streams that are no help. You see a terror and are afraid. Have I ever said give me something and from your fortune make gifts in my favor? Or deliver me from the enemy's power and from the hand of tyrants ransom me? Teach me, and I, for my part, will be silent. Explain to me how I have been mistaken. How painful are honest words, but what does your reproof prove? Do you intend to criticize mere words and treat the words of a despairing man as wind? Yes, you would gamble for the fatherless and auction off your friend. Now then, be good enough to look at me, and I will not lie to your face. Relent, let there be no falsehood. Reconsider, for my righteousness is intact. Is there any falsehood on my lips? Can my mouth not discern evil things? Does not humanity have hard service on earth? Are not their days also like the days of a hired man? Like a servant longing for the evening shadow and like a hired man looking for his wages. Thus I have been made to inherit months of futility and nights of sorrow have been appointed to me. If I lie down, I say, when will I arise? And the night stretches on and I toss and turn restlessly until the day dawns. My body is clothed with worms and dirty scabs. My skin is broken and festering. My days are swifter than a weaver's shuttle and they come to an end without hope. Remember that my life is but a breath, that my eyes will never again see happiness. The eye of him who sees me now will see me no more. Your eyes will look for me, but I will be gone. As a cloud is dispersed and then disappears, so the one who goes down to the grave does not come up again. He returns no more to his house, nor does his place of residence know him any more. Therefore I will not refrain my mouth. I will speak in the anguish of my spirit. I will complain in the bitterness of my soul. Am I the seer, the creature of the deep, that you must put me under guard? If I say my bed will comfort me, my couch will ease my complaint, then you scare me with dreams and terrify me with visions so that I would prefer strangling and death more than life. I loathe it. I do not want to live forever. Leave me alone for my days are a vapor. What is mankind that you make so much of them and that you pay attention to them and that you visit them every morning and try them every moment? Will you never look away from me? Will you not let me alone long enough to swallow my spittle? If I have sinned, what have I done to you, O watcher of men? Why have you set me as your target? Have I become a burden to you? And why do you not pardon my transgression and take away my iniquity? 
For now I will lie down in the dust, and you will seek me diligently, but I will be gone. Then Bildad the Shuite spoke up and said, How long will you speak these things, seeing that the words of your mouth are like a great wind? Does God pervert justice, or does the Almighty pervert what is right? If your children sinned against him, he gave them over to the plenty of their sin. But if you will look to God and make your supplication to the Almighty, if you become pure and upright, even now he will rouse himself for you and will restore your righteous abode. Your beginning will seem so small since your future will flourish. For inquire now of the former generation and pay attention to the findings of their ancestors. For we were born yesterday and do not have knowledge since our days on earth are but a shadow. Will they not instruct you and speak to you and bring forth words from their understanding? Can the papyrus plant grow tall where there is no marsh? Can reeds flourish without water? While they are still beginning to flower and not ripe for cutting, they can wither away faster than any grass. Such is the destiny of all who forget God, the hope of the godless perishes, whose trust is in something futile, whose security is a spider's web. He leans against his house, but it does not hold up. He takes hold of it, but it does not stand. He is a well-watered plant in the sun, its shoots spread over its garden. It wraps its roots around a heap of stones, and it looks for a place among stones. If he is uprooted from his place, then that place will disown him, saying, I have never seen you. Indeed, this is the joy of his way, and out of the earth others spring up. Surely God does not reject a blameless man, nor does he grasp the hand of the evildoers. He will yet fill your mouth with laughter and your lips with gladness. Those who hate you will be clothed with shame, and the tent of the wicked will be no more. God, one of the wisest things that Job says in this particular section, as he's fussing at his friends, <laughs> is in uh, chapter 6, verse 25, how painful are honest words, but what does your reproof prove? And this sticks out in my mind because I have people in my life who like to help by saying things to me in certain situations. And they are truly trying to be helpful and give me advice. However, their advice is biblically wrong. <laughs> and if I didn't know the Bible well enough to make that statement, I could be taking the advice of someone who would steer me off track. I also have amazing people in my life that you've blessed me with that are God-fearing people and know their Bible very well and live that life day in and day out. And I can be going along just fine in my life. And one of them will come to me and say something to me. And even though the honest words are painful, I completely stop everything at that point because I know what they've spoken is truth. No matter how hard it hurts personally to hear some of those things. I also know part two of that is there, the intention isn't there to hurt me. The intention there is to love me so much that they want to be able to tell me the truth so that I can fix something and glorify you more. How amazing is it that love works that way? So as Job's trying to figure this out and he's listening to his three, I guess we're almost four friends, three friends <laughs> initially, um, who, who are wrong. They're so wrong, and it's not, it's not so much that Job understands that they're biblically wrong. He just knows they're wrong because he hasn't done anything wrong, and he's trying to be really clear about that. I am searching my mind, friends. I can't come up with anything. And then one of them says, well, maybe your children did, did the sin, and that's why they died. Um, and Job's like, I don't think you understand. <laughs> I cannot come up with anything that I have done wrong. I am blameless. And, and how do I show God I'm blameless if what you're saying is the truth? So God, I, I, I want you to help us to understand that we have those two different types of friends in our lives and give us discernment so that we can tell the two apart. The people who are speaking God honoring words and advice into our life, even though it might hurt, and those who are just trying to be helpful but do not understand your, your word and your, um, 
guidelines and your commandments for us. I was out to dinner with a very dear friend of mine who, who loves me very much. Um, and of course, we were talking about all sorts of things and we crossed the topic of me being single. And he said, oh, I know God has somebody for you. I'm like, ah, no, nope, you don't get to say that. <laughs> Because God could and God couldn't. It's up to God whether he does or not. Biblically, what you're saying is not the truth. Um, so I don't even want to continue this conversation. That That is not comforting words to a person who is supposed to go by what the Bible teaches. Um, there's nothing in the Bible that says God's going to show up with a guy. <laughs> so God, in that situation... Um, that discernment of coming in where I wanted to be comforted by words, but I had to stop and say, ah, no, even though those words are kind of false comfort, you know, a lot of single people hope and wish that you would have somebody waiting for them. It's not the truth. Um, you may or you may not. There's no, no place in the Bible that there's any given promise of anything like that at all. <laughs> And then the other, uh, the other part is true as well. Um, I was getting ready to move to New York. I had everything set up. I knew wh where I was going to moving. I was already looking at uh, real estate up there, um, figuring out how to move my business. Like everything was in place. My friends were already saying goodbye to me. Like everything was ready to go. And one of, one of the most respected uh, men of God that I have in my life, who is just amazing, he's like a father to me. Um, came up to me on a Sunday and said, uh, I've been talking to God and you're not supposed to go to New York. <laughs> so here, all of this forward movement, I was so excited to go to New York. I figured because it was so easy that I had your blessing. Um, all my friends were excited, sad to see me go, but were excited for me. I, I was going. And then Jim came up to me and said, no, you're not supposed to go. The reason that you're choosing to leave is wrong. I don't know what that reason is, but God's been really clear with me. It's wrong. And because I know, even though those words killed me that day, everything was in motion. Everything was already ready to go. Jim didn't tell me that to hurt me. He told me that because he loves me enough to share your word with me. And I had to stop and I had to do some really big soul searching that weekend because it was Jim who said it because I know he is a God-fearing man. I know he listens to you. And by the end of the weekend, by Monday, I realized what you were trying to say to me through him. And Jim was right. And you, of course, were right. <laughs> I wasn't supposed to go to New York, at least not at that time. So God, I pray that everybody has people in their life who they can trust, that even if they speak truth into our lives and it hurts and it's painful to hear, that these are people who say those things so much out of love that they want what is best for us, which is just an amazing shadow of how you treat us. You want what is best for us as well. And sometimes like Job, we have to go through horrible times to get to what is best for us. Maybe it's learning. Maybe it's somebody else watching how we go through something. We, we never know. Well, sometimes you let us know. But for the most part, we don't know why things happen. And we don't need to know why things happen. We just have to have faith and trust in you that you have our best interest always at heart. And God, I hope that everyone listening to this video today has somebody in their life here on earth that will do the same thing for them, that will love them enough to stop them in their tracks, as painful as it may be, and say, hey, did you think about this? Or, hey, when you said this, I know you didn't mean it, but this is how it came out. Or, gosh, I think you might have a problem with something. Can we sit down and talk about this? And how amazing to have a friend you can trust that much to know that they are simply saying those words out of love. Poor Job didn't have those. <laughs> Um, I don't know why his friends were so insistent, if this is truly what they believed, or they just wanted to bring Job down to the level, they were jealous that he was blameless, I don't know. But I do know he's getting really frustrated at them. God, thank you for your truth. 
Thank you for loving us enough to discipline us out of love. You know, when I go through hard times now, not in the past, but when I go through hard times now, I almost get more excited at going through the hard times because I know you're doing something. You're teaching me something. I'm going to be growing. There's going to be those growing pains that are going to be hard, but I'm really excited at this next level. When my life is going good and everything seems to be happy, I almost get a little bit nervous. <laughs> I want to grow. I want to, I want to glorify you. I want to be everything that you created me to be. Um, and I totally realize that a lot of that's going to be painful. Um, and I'm okay with it because I have you. I have you in my heart. I have you walking beside me. And you've promised me your strength through it all. God, thank you for loving us so much that you want us to have the best of everything in this world. In your son's name I pray. Amen.